All right, welcome back. So this time we're going to talk about inputs. Uh, so as you know, the way inputs work on a PLC is uh, there is an AC source, uh, at least in ours it's AC, um, and then there's a hot and a neutral uh, line on this AC. Um, really, these are just names, right? Hot is also called line. Um, and the way these work in the most simple fashion is an input is either connected to this magical node uh, called hot or it is not. Uh, typically when it's not connected to that it's just floating. Um, so these two states have names. So it's either hot or it's floating. Um, whenever it's hot it's referred to as made. Um, and whenever it's floating it's re referred to as broken. So the state that an input can be in, it can be either made um, or it can be broken. People like to confuse, um, so there's also other names for these. Um, you'll notice that like whenever it is connected to hot, um, it's kind of a closed circuit. Um, so made is also called closed, which is really just shorthand for closed circuit, right? So it's a closed circuit system. Um, and then if it's broken, so you can see that this one is currently uh, in a broken state, that's also referred to as open. So if people say open, that means open circuit, which means broken. Um, if it's closed circuit, uh, that's made. So here's just kind of a little diagram of this push button is being pushed down, um, and so it is on, which is yet another word. Um, instead of saying on here, I would have said made. Um, and then this one is not being pushed down, so it's off, uh, which I would have said broken. So I guess there's three words, technically. There's <laughs> on, made, and closed, which are all synonyms. Um, and then there's broken, open, and off, which are all synonyms. Whew. Um, so this is the state. This is the status. Turns out a little more complex than this, right? And the reason it's a little more complex than this is because switches don't have to be normally open. Um, so all these switches are normally open momentaries, which is simple. But most switches actually have multiple legs on them. Um, and so here's uh, an example of a, a circuit. Um, so typically um, you will have the hot line connected to the common. So you know you'll have your little AC source or whatever here. Um, and you know this will go to the PLC um, and so it will go to the common line and then coming out of this you'll have two legs um, one of which is called normally open the other is called normally closed uh, you can see it in a real circuit here this is the normally closed right here and then this is the normally open right here and they're very simple right it's just a spring um, and so the normally closed um, is transmitting even when you're not pressing the button um, whereas normally open which is the one your brain typically thinks about first um, is the one that is not touching until you press down um, so until you provide a stimulus to this guy um, and then it switches to the made state so in order to know what state something's in, made or broken, you have to know what type of switch it is, normally open or normally closed, and then you have to know whether the stimulus to it is present or not. And then those go together to make the state of either made or broken. Um, so let's just go ahead and look at uh, an example here. So let's, so let's say that this guy is connected, so the comm line is coming in here. Um, if, you know, input 8... Uh, I think I grabbed more like I6 there. Um, if it was going to the normally closed line, you would have to know that information. Um, and then let's say this one's going to I1. Um, you would have to know that the normally open is going to I1. Typically, you would only connect one or the other. Um, and if the guy that built your system is being nice to you, he will connect the normally open line. Uh, but he may connect the normally closed, and you have to be able to adjust that. In lab, we're going to just tell you this is how we connected it, and we may be evil just to like test you, right? Um, and then you have to figure out how to control it from there. Typically what I like to do when I'm thinking about these is I like to make a little diagram. So see if you can complete this. Into each row, write either the word made um, or the word broken uh, in your notes um, and see if you understand how this thing works. All right, so I'm going to do it with you. 
Um, so if we have a normally open switch um, and it's in its default state, which I usually call a star, um, so if it's normally open and it's in its default state, that means it's broken. Um, if it's a normally closed and it's in its default state, i.e. no stimulus present, um, it's made, right? So, I mean, open means broken, closed means made, that's pretty simple. Um, when the stimulus comes along, it just switches, right? So the normally open, whenever a finger presses it or a box breaks it or whatever the stimulus is, it changes to the other. If it was normally closed and you have a stimulus that comes present, um, then the state becomes mm -hmm. broken. Um, and the PLC only cares about made or broken, right? In fact, the PLC is a black box. It has no idea what's out there. The only thing it knows is, you know, am I seeing hot or not? Um, so internally, it only cares about made and broken, but externally, you have to care about how the switch really works. Um, and then the important thing is your simulation has to match the real world. There's more. <laughs> In addition to normally open, normally closed, there's also a concept of something that's momentary. Um, momentary is like when you push it and then you let off, it bounces back, right? So this is a spring-loaded push button, like you push it, uh, and then as soon as you let off, it bounces back. Um, the reverse is um, a position. So this one, if you flip the switch up and then you leave it alone, it stays where you put it, right? So it's called a position, um, whereas there's also a momentary. So you have to know, is it a normally open momentary, a normally closed uh, momentary, a normally open position, or a normally closed position. So you've got four possibilities uh, that you have to worry about. And technically, this is just important so you can make the simulation match. When you're writing the circuit, you don't even care about how the switch works. You just care about made or broken, right? Um, so PicoSoft. So you have to know not only the concepts of these things, but how do I actually use it in PicoSoft? If you remember the previous video lecture, uh, we actually did a little example of one of these guys. Uh, the example that we did over here, this is in the simulation area, we just made them all the second column. Uh, it turns out that this second column is momentary uh, normally open. So each column uh, defines a type. Uh, these first two are momentaries, so these two guys are your momentaries, um, and then these two guys are your positions. Um, and you have to make the simulation match the real world. Um, and then this first one is a normally closed and then a normally open. And then the positions work very similar. There's normally closed and normally opens on those as well. In fact, if your eyes are really, really good, you can like look at this drawing and make sense. Um, so this thing represents like a button, so you'd push this button. Um, and you can see that this thing in this state is connected all the way through. Um, but if you were to push right here, um, it would open this thing up, right? Likewise, uh, the momentary that's normally open, um, you can see right now there's no connection. Um, but if you were to push this button, um, it would actually close the switch, um, and then you would have um, a made. So the symbol there actually makes sense. Um, these guys very similar. It's got this little edge symbol, um, and this says, I detect edges. Um, and so the button is an edge um, in the same way. You can see that it's connected now, so it must be in a normally closed, um, whereas this one is not connected, so it's normally open. So if your eyes are really good, you don't even have to memorize what these things are. Um, you actually can just see the symbol and it makes sense to you. Um, so these two are the momentaries, those ones are the positions, um, and then it always goes um, open, closed, open, closed. Let's practice. So the way this is going to work in lab is we're going to say, hey, we've built a system. We've connected the wires. You as a software developer, you need to know what we did. Um, so let's pretend that this first one is a push button. Uh, and we tell you, hey, this is a normally open push button. The second input is a brake beam. Let's say we tell you, hey, this one's a normally closed brake beam. Uh, the third one is, let's say that this is I3 down here. Um, this one, I don't know, we'll say it's a normally open float switch. Um, so normal means no water. Um, and then I4 here is a normally closed float switch. So see if you can guess, or see if you can figure out, I should say, 
which radio button would be checked for each line. Um, so how would each of these lines uh, be checked in this example? All right, see if you can uh, make your best guess, and then I'll, I'll do it with you. All right, so if I was doing this, push buttons are pretty much always momentary, right? So you know it's going to be, this first one's going to be one of these first two columns, uh, which is momentary. And then we told you it was normally open, right? Um, so normally open uh, is this guy right here. Oh, shoot, I think maybe in the last slide I said... Well, I may have said it wrong, but it's definitely that one. <laughs> um, and then the second one is a break beam. Now, break beams you could kind of think of either way, right? So you could think of them as momentary because, like, you know, it's kind of a signal that's fleeting and passing, um, and then once it's gone, it kind of snaps back to the other state. Or you could think of it as position because, like, if you set a box in front of it, it's blocked. The nice thing is this. Really, the only difference between momentary and position is how it's used inside the simulation. Um, so your code doesn't care if it's momentary position, um, but the simulation does so that you can actually do the simulation. Turns out we're gonna use brake beams as momentaries um, because in our system, they kind of like, they're present then they go away, right? Because there's something on the conveyor belt. Um, so it's gonna always kind of be a momentary thing. Um, and then we said it was a normally closed momentary um, so I2 is going to be that first column of normally closed momentary. The next two. The next two involve water. Um, you know, again, you could think of it as momentary because, like, if the water is fleeting. Um, but to be honest, I prefer to think of them as position switches. And to be honest, the reason I do that is because when we do the simulation of them, they're going to need to be position switches because you can only click a momentary at one time. Um, whereas a position will actually stay there, and you only have one mouse, right? So these guys we're going to think of as, as position. So you know it's going to be one of these last two columns. Um, this one was a normally closed. Oops, vice versa. Uh, a normally open, then a normally closed. Uh, ignore that. Um, all right, so the answer to this is a little arbitrary, uh, but I would say the answer goes um, in this, this pattern, right? Um, so make sure you copy this into your notes. All right, so that was a little practice uh, of how you would set this thing up in the simulation. This is actually really important because if you do a simulation, um, it has to match the real world because if it doesn't, it'll work in the simulation, but then the real world's going to just explode, right? All right, it probably won't explode, but you get the idea. The other thing I like to do is I like to make a little table just so I know I've got it straight in my head. Um, so I always make a little table that looks like this. I say what the input is. Um, and I give it, you know, its number. Um, I then state whether it was, you know, momentary or position, normally open, normally closed. So I state what it was. Um, and then I say what is made and what is broken. The first thing I like to do is I like to go through and say, all right, this is a normally open. So it's kind of its default is broken. Uh, this one's default is closed, uh, open, closed. Um, and then I just go through and I say, hey, what, is, what does this mean? So this is a push button. If a push button is broken, it kind of means, you know, uh, no finger present, right? Um, and then here, when it's made, it means somebody is pressing the button. With a break beam, its default is, you know, no box. And then its broken state, so like it becomes broken when there's a box present. Um, to be honest, that's kind of confusing, but that's how the guy wired it, so you've got to make your simulation match how the guy wired it, right? You don't get a choice about how it gets wired. That's just how it is. Um, and then these guys, you know, the star is no water, uh, and then this one's water, uh, and then, you know, this one's water. So you can see that the stimulus is different in all these situations, like one time it's a finger, one time it's a box, one time it's water, but the concept is the same. You've got its normal state, um, and then you've got it switches states uh, when the stimulus is present. Um, so I went ahead and wrote that out um, a little prettier in text as well. Make sure you copy into your notes uh, what these things are. All right, so that's kind of your input table. Let's go ahead and let's play a little bit with uh, PicoSoft just so we get a feel for how these things work. Uh, let's do this. Let's go ahead and fire up PicoSoft. Um, let's go ahead and set these radio buttons uh, the same way that this example was. These unused ones, it was bothering me that they're all over the place. I'm going to make them all momentary normally opens. 
All right, so I think that I've matched um, how I want this to work. Boom, 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 boom. So kind of two, one, four, three. Um, and so we don't even have to have a circuit connected to it. We could actually just play with it right here. Um, and what I want to do is I want to, in the display area, show the inputs. Um, and then I really just want to play. Um, I, don't, I don't care if there's anything connected or not. So what I want to play with is I want to show you um, fire and not fire. Um, and when you play with this, you're probably going to have to get like two inches away from the screen because um, I just hit play. And you can see that I2 is on and I4 is also on. I can see this view because I've actually clicked on the display, the inputs. But it actually shows you the same information right up here. And if your eyes are really good, uh, you can see it. So as you might expect, expected, 2 and 4 were normally closed, so they're on. Um, and there's actually a little yellow and red fire up here as well, right? Um, if I wanted to, I could uncheck one of these guys. So I click on I4. You can see that he's now out, um, and his little red fire is gone in the button, too. I usually look for the little red fire. Oh, this I hate. But if you stop the simulation and restart it, um, you can see it, it keeps whatever state it was in last, not how it's set up as. I hate that. I wish PicoSoft did that different. Um, so the moral of the story is, if you're ever using a position switch, you always have to use your eye and look for the fire. Because after, you, after you've run it once, it's not going to go back to, to what it's set as, which I hate. Um, so there, they're both out. Um, if you were to press on I1, uh, you can see its green dot came on. You can also see it's got fire on the switch. Um, if I press I2, it goes away. Um, if I set both of these guys back high, you can see they're both high, 3 and 4, and you can see there's fire there. Just to try to give you a chance, I've zoomed in on these guys. So here you can see the default state was fire here on 2, fire here on 4. Um, if I uncheck them, you can see there's no fire. If I click on I1, you can see there is fire there. Um, if I click on I2, you can see there's no fire there. In fact, if your eyes are really, really good, you can see there's a difference in where they show the fire, if it's normally open or normally closed. Um, moral of the story is plan on looking closely because that fire tells you what state it's really in. All right, that was a long speech. Uh, so that's it for this time. Uh, you now know everything you need to know about inputs. Um, I think probably the, the moral of the story is there's a type, there's a stimulus, and then there's a state. All right, see you next time. We'll do some work with logic gates. Bye.